We're just grateful to uh, let God have his way, and certainly we did. It doesn't happen very often, but we did uh, go over. But uh, I, like I told Lady Deborah, you all in my message anyway. But uh, what we want to talk about today, we've been in a series about, um, turn if you will to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Uh, we have been in a series about Stop the Madness. Um, Jesus told his disciples, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Uh, and he said in one place, uh, Brother Orlando, I'm glad to see you. I missed you last week. Um, he said at one place, he said, peace, my peace, I leave with you. Is there anybody here that know that God will give you a peace in the midst of a storm? Is there anybody here that's like Paul that said, Paul said that I have learned how to be content in whatsoever state I'm in. You see, when you're walking with God, God gives you the ability to, to transcend your circumstances. Uh, you may not have any money. You may have friends that have walked out from you. Your way may look dark. It may look like there is no way, but because of the faith that you have. Now, what do you mean by faith, Pastor? By faith, I'm saying, faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. I'm not talking about some kind of supposition or some kind of fantasy, but because God has said something. Because God said that I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. I don't have to see nothing in the bank account to know that my God will make a way. I, has he done it? Is there anybody here that can say God has done it? I'm not, I'm not talking about I'm looking for him to do it, but God has a history. Anybody here, God, you got a history with God? You got a history with God? And so he has made a way. We have been in a series about Stop the Madness. I, now, when I say Stop the Madness, Sister Linda Patterson, I'm not talking about stopping nothing out here in the world. But what I'm saying is, is that you can't take me along with you. You see, the Bible talks about the difference between light and darkness. Light and darkness. And so there ought to be a difference between clean and unclean. And just because the world is going to hell in a handbasket does not mean I have to go with you. I know that I have a savior that cares. And he'll do the same thing for you that he's done for me. And all God asks, Brother Moss, God does not ask that you have a certain degree. God does not ask uh, that you have a certain record. See, that's the reason I fell out with church folk. Because church folk said you got to have a certain record in order for God to deal with you. But when I heard him say, come unto me all you that labor. And he was calling my name. He was calling my name. I never would have got it right fooling with you church folk. Because y'all told me I had to give a certain amount of my money. You told me that I had to stop this and stop that. But I heard him say, just come just like you are. All I ask you to do is just believe that what I did on Calvary's cross paid your sin. Your heart you will believe unto righteousness. God made it so easy for me. It was easy, Lady Deborah, but then again, it was hard. It was hard because I had to get past myself. And you see, even after you get saved, you got to get past you. See, so you're walking around everybody, you blaming everybody for the shape that you're in. But I want you to know that your problem, you're looking at it every day in the mirror. And that's what we want to talk about today. And stop the madness. We want to talk about emotional instability emotional instability well I need to go and put a little subject on that too look at your neighbor look at them right there in the eye and just tell them say it is what it is it, it is it is what it is uh, I was telling Lady Deborah I took on a new job as the prosecutor up in West Memphis and um, that's going to mean that you know trials and this and that and pressure and whatever but I told her this morning I said baby I said this is just between me you and the gate post she said what is it I said I'm built for it <laughs> I'm built for it let me tell you something I stand with Paul when Paul says I can do all things this is a dog that I'm getting ready to walk away from this I'm getting ready to walk away from this foolishness I've been tied to foolishness too long see when you know whose hand you got your hand you see I heard the songwriter mother Norm, when he said uh, I don't know 
about tomorrow. But I know that he that holds tomorrow, he holds my hand. And so I have no reason to walk around in fear, emotional instability, everything. You up and down and you can't, you're, you're walking around biting your finger there, pulling your house, wondering how you going to make it. But I want you to know that he is a solid rock. Somebody said on Christ, the solid rock. I stand. So, sister, sister, one, that's the reason I'm telling all fake friends and everybody that don't want to see me make it and everything, baby, take a seat in the audience uh, and just watch what my God going to do. You watch him. I've seen him do it too many times. When I took that job the other day, I texted some friends of mine. I said, you know what? From the crack house to the courthouse, shaking my head. Let me tell you something. I, I don't care. It ain't no secret. They know it. But you see, God cleaned up my record. God cleaned up my path. God made a way out of no way. Don't tell me about your God. Emotional stability. You know, the devil tries to bring fear upon you and, and, and have you the whole resentments in your heart against people. And you say, but you're all messed up. And you say, but and let, let me tell you this right here. Don't think that you're fooling nobody. Folk know you messed up. You might not never admit it, but we know something wrong with you. Because when certain things come up, you go to twitching in the eyes. So, so if certain stuff come up, you, you go to... But it's time now, Vanna Jr., just to look the devil straight in the eye and tell him, see, you know what, devil? It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I went through it. I didn't get stuck. I'm getting ready to move off from it. Whoever don't like it, whoever can't deal with it, God bless you. But I got my hand in God's hand. Ain't nothing. He said, I'll take you through the flood and the flood won't overtake you. I'll take you through the fire. And when you come out the fire, smoke won't even be in your clothes. Just somebody know what I'm talking about. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, I don't look like what I've been through. I run up. I don't look like that. I don't look like what I've been through. The devil is alive. All the days of my life, God has taken care of me. All the days of my life. I tell you what, God will clean you up and look like you ain't been in the middle of nothing. Look like you ain't never. Y'all ready to roll? The devil, it is what it is. <laughs> I had that scripture, but you know what? Let's go over to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Mm -hmm. Stop the madness. <laughs> uh -uh. The devil, God wouldn't have never allowed me to walk into this place. <laughs> if he wasn't going to take me through. So I just said, buckle up. It's getting ready to be a heck of a ride. And I said, just stand back and watch my God. And it's not me, but it's Christ that's inside of me. Have you found out that when Christ is working inside of you, you can do things that you didn't think you would do. You'll know things you didn't know that you knew. God will open doors that seem like they were closed in your path. God will make ways that look like it wasn't going to ever come through. Have me walking around here wondering and all messed up. That's that's when Paul told Timothy when he first started out. First Timothy, Paul said, "Look here, Timothy, I love you. I ain't got no son like you. Everybody else done run off and left me. You know, Titus is a little too hot headed, but he said you a little too timid. You, you, you see, I made up my mind a long time ago, Lady Deborah." I made up my mind a long time ago that if I'm dealing with somebody, if somebody's going to be intimidated, guess what? It's going to be you. You're not going to intimidate me. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much you know. Because I heard Paul say, if God be for us, he's more than the world against me. And so with God on my side, ain't no stopping, ain't no stopping me now. Stop this madness. 
to stop this madness. I'm not standing in my own strength. But he said, be strong in the Lord. The, the gospel writer said, quit yourself like me. I ain't, see, we ain't even getting the right teaching. We, all we know to do is come to church, uh, A and B selection, take up an offering, uh, listen to the pastor saying, but I need somebody to help me with my emotions. Uh, help me. With, I've been had stuff that happened to me when I was seven, eight years old that I still ain't got over with. Uh, and I'm saying, help me with my emotions. If you don't think it make a difference about your emotion, you just think about that rascal that you thought you couldn't make it without. <laughs> just think about how you sat around and waited for the phone to ring. <laughs> just think about how your stomach was all in knots. <laughs> and think about right now, it's been 10, 15, 20 years since you even thought about him. <laughs> You're walking around crying about nothing. <laughs> Help me with my emotions. <laughs> Level me out <laughs> where I can do what you want me to do. <laughs> Some men that lost women because of that. Because you couldn't get emotionally stable. Don't no woman want no man that's all the time running up behind her, checking on her. You go, can't go to their mama house. You call, have you made it over there yet? We know what you're doing. You so insecure with yourself. But a woman want a man that is a man. That know that baby. You can go across the world. You ain't gonna find nobody like me. emotionally stable it is what it is I, I will accept my infirmities but Paul says he ain't rather I glory in my infirmities because his strip is made perfect in my weakness do I have a witness here that will say I was so weak but God came in and stripped me God took the fears away from my heart God showed me that him with me couldn't nobody stop me I heard Mother Nunn said she was on the job. <laughs> Kathleen, she said he, she was on the job. <laughs> and you know when you're on job, <laughs> especially when they find out maybe you done bought a car or something like that, <laughs> they go to plan with you then. <laughs> but I want you to know, she told them, she said, look, God gave me this job. <laughs> and I don't care who don't like it, who don't want me to be here until God moves me. <laughs> I'm going to be right here in this job. <laughs> and I want you to know, devil, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm tired of being scared. <laughs> I'm tired do you know you're affecting your heart you're affecting your liver you're affecting your stomach acid is all in your stomach you can't go to sleep at night you got acid reflux and it's all because you're scared every day because the devil is threatening you about this going to happen and that's going to happen but I came today to tell the devil shoot your best shot because I want you to know something that my God will never leave me not forsake me of being scared. Keep your whole life. Years, for years he's been telling you you ain't going to make it. For years he's been telling you that you're going to go broke. For years he's going to be telling you everybody going to walk off and leave. And come to tell the devil, devil, you know what? Anybody that leave, God going to put somebody better there in the place of them. You were supposed to leave. Do you know that some folk can't walk with you? It, it, the Bible said, be, don't be unequally yoked. It don't make no difference how, how much you like them, but God will separate you from folk that ain't supposed to be walking with you. No wonder it was that the old lady said, anyway you bless me you see you have to get out of that thing about trying to tell God God I want this and God I want that because see we done done that and we done got some stuff that we tried to throw back to God but when you get in the right place you tell God you say God not my will but thy will be done you put the people in my life you give me the job you want me to have stop the madness getting ready to be emotionally stable emotionally stable make no difference how the storm storm rage makes no difference how to dash how to how to break us dash it makes no difference how the heathens rage but God will give you blessed 
assurance. <laughs> said, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> no wonder. You know that's what Pilate told Jesus. <laughs> he said, you walking up in here, you won't say nothing. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Don't you know that I am the procurator? <laughs> that the Roman Caesar had put me here in this place uh, and that you're going to have to say something because I got your life in my hand. Have they, have, they, have they ever told you that they had your life in their hand? Now, that's when Jesus, Kathleen, that's when my Lord and Savior <laughs> lifted his noble brow and he looked him in his eye. <laughs> because you see, many times people don't know who you are. <laughs> they know who they are, but they don't know who you are. <laughs> Uh, and the thing about it, when you know who you are, you don't have to walk around with a bumper sticker. Huh? You don't have to walk around with it on a t-shirt. Huh? Because you, but Jesus said, I am that I am. Huh? But he stopped it long enough to talk to, to Pilate. He told Pilate, he said, look, let me tell you something. No man take my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it back up again. And he said that if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men back unto my... Stop the madness. Stop the madness. The Lord, the Lord expects us to walk with confidence. Not arrogance. But confidence. Now they're going to call it arrogance because the world don't know how to deal with folk that know who they are. The day that you realize who you are, church folk going to burn you out. <laughs> the day that you realize. <laughs> See, I don't never walk around talking about what God going to do because he's already done it. <laughs> the work on the cross is a finished work <laughs> because the book of Hebrews says that he himself purged up of our sin and then he sat down. You don't sit down till your work is over with. He sat down on the right hand of God yes. until the, all of his enemies be made his footstool. Brother, <laughs> Brother Clark, all I have to give God is, is faith. All I have to furnish him is faith. Everything is already there. It's like faith is a blank check. When I believe God, that's when it becomes real to me. You see, what? it ain't no secret to God where you are and what you have done and the accomplishments you have and how God brought. That ain't no secret to God. Before you ever got here, God preordained that you would walk in his glory. But you had to go through it in order to get to it. You had to go through it in order to get to it. <laughs> but you know, we want the easy way. We just want to step off into our blessings. <laughs> but you know what? It's a bad thing when folk get stuff they ain't work for. They appreciate it. I was just telling Deborah last night, I bought Vanna Jr. a rent house. I said, I shouldn't have done that. I said, because when I bought that right there, he don't know what to do with it. But I gand dog dog to you. If he had to pay every dime for it, he'd know what to do with it. It's a difference when you work for something. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, I had to suffer for this. I had to suffer. This what this what you see me walking in right now. This this what this what you see me enjoy. Yeah, folk get jealous of you when they see what you got. They see your happy home. But you see, the truth of the matter is, is that you had to suffer for that because God brings you through. And when you come through, you come through with a different attitude. You come. You don't come through talking about what you did. But when you come through, you say, if it had not been for the Lord. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all, I, I wish I had. I wish I had about seven folk knew what I was talking about. We'll tear this place up. Y'all have to be, you have to get some more chairs. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 16th chapter. Okay. Our time near about up. We started late. Okay. Matthew 16. Look what he says. He said in 13th verse, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? <laughs> you see, now by this time, Mother Nun, they have seen him uh, open blinded eyes, unstuffed deaf ears. By this time, they have recognized him as the Messiah, the one that is to come. Because Philip went and got his brother Nathaniel, and he told him, he said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. He came.
came and told him, he said, look here, I found him. I found him. The one that Moses talked about, that, that God will raise up a prophet like unto your brother. I found him, who Isaiah talked about when he said that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of, I found him. So now, you see, this is where the church failed me. Uh, after that I had got saved, the church did not tutor me into deliverance of my mind. Uh, you see, in order to become emotionally stable, Vander Jr., you have to mature. Mm -mm. We don't get mad at a baby because the baby crying. We know the baby needs something when he go to crying. That baby hungry. The baby diaper need to be changed. It's something wrong. But you catch a rascal that's 17, 18 years old every time. Every time something happens, he go to crying. It's hold on, something is wrong here. You, your body is getting older, but your mind, your mind, and that's what the problem is in the church. They have not helped us. To become emotionally stable. Yeah. Do you know it's something? I don't care how much money you got in the bank. Huh? I don't care what kind of car you drove up in. Huh? I don't care what kind of degree you, you hold. Huh? If you're not emotionally stable, your life is living hell. You can't even enjoy what you got huh? because you are emotionally unstable. You're not able to accept life on life terms. Life just happens. Huh? Life just happens. But <laughs> we lose our loved ones. Uh, we see our loved ones in a bad shape. Uh, tragic things happen. And if I'm not emotionally stable, I'll go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs <laughs> with my saved self. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, who do men say? See, the first thing you got to do is you got to identify what the outsiders are saying. And then he said, uh, they, say, say, they said, some said thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, Behold, but whom say ye that I am? You see, your emotional stability is, is directly related to who you know Jesus to be. If you know that he is a provider, when that financial storm come, and I want you to know something, I don't care how much money you got, it's coming. It, the financial storm is coming. The, the brook, Elijah was by the brook and he had ravens that brought him meat, but it come a day, Lady Deborah, that the brook dried up. He, the brook dried up one day and he could have sat there and died, but he heard a word from God and he said, look, he said he could have complained about the brook drying up, but he left the brook because God gave him further instructions. God said, look at here, I got something for you. If you thought this was something, that a bird was bringing you steaks and you was drinking from the brook in the middle of a famine, you think that's something? There's a widow woman down in Zarephath and I have commanded her to sustain thee. And look when he goes to the widow woman, she in a bad shape. She gathering sticks. She said, I'm getting ready to cook a few cakes where that when me and my son eat it, we can lay down and die. But he told us that woman, if you'll give the man a God, you'll never want for anything. God will. If you know him as a provider. Lady Deborah, the old people told us that baby, you got to know him for yourself. You can't make it up of mamas. You got to know him for yourself. <laughs> Brother Davis, the way you get to know him is when the brook dry up. <laughs> Oh, you don't know God will provide if the brook ain't never dried up. Oh, you don't know that he's a friend, Sister Anna Bailey, that stick closer than a brother until friends walk off. You don't know. But I tell you what, when God reached way down and get you. When you so depressed that you can't even hardly pray. When you so messed up you don't know which way to go and God come in and touch your mind. God come in and turn you around and put your feet. Mother Bland when you go through something like that 
you know him for yourself. <laughs> you ain't talking about what you heard nobody say. <laughs> but you can say, baby, I know that it wasn't me. <laughs> I know I didn't have no resources. I know that I was plum out of ideas. <laughs> and God stepped in. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all tired. All right, all right. He says, but whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajana, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now watch this. Not many, not many verses down, he's going to tell Peter that, Peter, you getting ready to deny me. Peter, you getting ready to walk off. Peter, you getting ready to cuss. Huh? But I want you to tell something. I'm building it on you. Huh? Because you see, what you're going to go through, huh? when you come out, hey, you're going to be better than you was. Huh? Because you got something that you don't think you got. Huh? Because, Peter, you are emotionally unstable. He said, look, when they smite the shepherd, all the sheep gonna run. <laughs> Have you ever thought you were somewhere that you really wasn't? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. That first time that you got your heart broke, you didn't understand other folks. Why don't she just leave him? But oh, my God, when it was you, you went and tried to grab the broke doorknob, but you couldn't turn it. I'm talking about emotionally stable. I'm talking about when you plant your feet and you realize, you said, God, if you don't help me, I ain't going to be able to stand the storm. Huh? And just, I ain't going looking for nobody. I ain't looking for nothing else. I'm going to stay right here, God. That's when he told his disciples, Lady Deborah, he told them, say, occupy. Yeah. Till I come. We've been running scared. We've been letting us make, let them make us drunk with songs. We just sang a song saying the same thing over and over again. But he said, occupy. Uh, to occupy means that this is a territory that now it belonged to you. This belonged to you. So now I'm not walking through my own house scared. I'm not going on my job scared. Devil, God gave me this job. And until God moved me to another one, it don't make no difference how many times you write me up. It don't make no difference how many folk here don't like me. It don't make no difference how many, how you whisper. It don't make no difference how many meetings y'all have that y'all don't tell me about. Until God moved me, this is where I'll be. And so I'm going to holler out and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. You all you ought to mess the devil up Monday well you've been walking around up in there for all scared and your mind all right you ought to mess the devil up huh? you ought to just skip up in there <laughs> you ought to tell me when they ask you say how you been doing baby I ain't never been this happy in my life I tell you what all my confidence is in God <laughs> stop the madness he said, I say unto thou, Peter, and I will give unto thee the kings, the keys of the kingdom. Now turn with me, if you will, over to, uh, I, I want to go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Now, I didn't read all that. We, we, you know the story, how that Peter, he told Peter that you're going you're gonna to deny me before the cock crows twice. You're going to deny me thrice. You, you, and sure enough, Peter did it just like he said. But Peter stood up. Peter said, if all other men uh, leave you, I, I'll never forsake you. And you know, he did try to put up a fight when, when they came and everything. He took his sword and he cut off Malchus to serve him. He cut off his ear and everything. But Jesus put the ear back and said, they that live by the sword shall die by the so he tried to tell him, said, look, I got to go to the cross. I have to go to the cross. And you see, Lady Deborah, whatever it is that God has you where you are and where you're going, hear me now, you built for it. You built for it. <laughs> this, you, that, whatever your trial is, it's tailor made for you. <laughs> God tailor made that trial for you to walk through that. <laughs> and when you get on the other side, and then, then watch what Jesus tell Peter. Jesus tell Peter, He said, But when thou art converted, He didn't say if, huh? He said, But when thou art converted, when you get emotionally stable, when you get your feet on solid ground, I know I'm going to bring you through. It ain't going to feel good. It's not going to feel good what you got to go through. 
But when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. <laughs> Help them that's coming behind you. Help them. Help them that's coming behind you. Be a bridge builder. Be a bridge builder. Somebody had to build a bridge for you. Somebody had to make a way for you. You didn't build every bridge that you came across. And when God bless you to come across, don't you go off by yourself. But you build a bridge where you can come across. He said, stripping. Stripping your brother. Look at your neighbor and tell me, there's a purpose for my pain. There's a purpose. There's a purpose for my pain. I'm not sitting around feeling sorry for myself because this was tailor-made for me. I, I, I want you to know something. I know what it is to walk around homeless. I know what it is to walk around wanting to jump in front of a car. I know what it is to be unemployed and unemployable. But I also know what it is for God to step in with a mighty hand. I know what it is for God to restore. I know what it is for God to bewilder folks. The same way that Legion was over there in the Gadarenes and he cut himself at night. Cut himself. You see, Dorothy, most of what happened to me, I did it to myself. I didn't holler. I didn't holler. I wasn't no, I wasn't no sissy, no punk or nothing. It wasn't nobody just coming up doing whatever they wanted to, to me. What happened to me, I did it to myself. And they said a man cut himself and at night he would cry out. You see, we, act, we try to act like we all right. But, but, but you see, the thing about it is, is that Jesus looked past all of our denial. And the Bible says that when the people came, they found him clothed and in his right mind. He didn't even look like the same man. Is this the same man? Is this legion? Is this the one that we had all the trouble out of? He said, yes, I'm the same man. But then the legion said, look, Jesus, I want to go and follow you. And that's what I got against church, folks. Y'all want to stay in church all the time. Y'all want to have revival two or three weeks. And then you got a child over here that you can't even read. You need to be at home with him trying to teach him how to... hiding out in church because you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to go home because you don't want to be no wife. You don't want to go home because you don't want to be a parent. So you just stay in church all the time. She said, Jesus, I want to go with you. Jesus said, no. I'm a loner. I really don't need your help. I'm God all by myself. If I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. But I want you, what I want you to do is, I want you to go back. <laughs> and it's another man that's cutting himself. Huh? It's another man that everybody turned turn their back on. I want you to go back and tell them the great thing that I have died from till I die, Brother Jeff. I'll never quit telling. I'll never be ashamed. I've told the governor, sit down with, I think when Huckabee was the governor, I sat down with the governor, you know, you sitting up in there with all the big shots and everything, and they talking about this and redistricting and everything. I went to talking about smoking crack. I said, well, I wasn't doing that when I was smoking crack. It's like, it's like a record of right there. But I want you to know something, that it wasn't y'all, but it was God. And you think I'm a God to put me in this position? And you think I ain't going to tell what God had done? I don't care what you... I don't care who you think you was. I know it was that came and got me. I know who put my family back together. I know who gave me my mind back. Y'all gonna leave God out of it. You ain't gonna come to nothing no way. The Bible says he that watches the city, you watch in vain. If you ain't, if you're not bringing God into the equation, you are, everything that you're doing is in vain. All right, all right. I started a little late. Y'all got to give me a minute. Look at here what he says right here. Let's go to First Peter five. Now look at Peter now. Look at Peter now. He, he's become emotionally stable. You see, you got to go through something. It's, it's about two or three of us that got some bought sense. First Peter 5. 
it's, it's, it's expensive, but I promise you, Jackie, you buy you some sense. Can't nobody change your mind. <laughs> what you say, mother? Mother said, I, I got the t-shirt and the hat. You can't take me down that road no more. I, I already been down that road. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I don't care. A woman can be 38, 24, 49. She ain't taking me away from Lady Deborah. No, Jesus. No, Jesus. I sleep good at night. That's right. It, boy, I'm telling you what, it messed up when your house messed up. Yeah, you out in the streets, key, 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 grinning. Thank you, Jesus. Soon as you tear your house up, and then you go knock on the door over there, they tell you, you can't come in, somebody else here tonight. Y'all don't like the truth. That's all right. That's all right. I've been waiting on somebody to tell the truth at church. I, I need some help. Look what he says, 1 Peter 5 and 6. He said, humble yourselves. Uh-uh, let's start at verse 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Look what he done got, he done got stable now, uh, Bushy. He says, and be clothed with humility. Some Peter didn't have. Peter didn't have a bit of humility. If everybody else leave, and they, he didn't, he, what he should have been saying, Lord, help me. Lord, you help me. But he wasn't stable. He said, for God resists the proud yeah. and give grace to the humble. I'm going home. I'm almost through. He said, humble yourself. Yeah. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, I got to stay before God because I'm no match. If I don't leave, if I don't leave everything in God's hands, Sister Dorothy, the devil is too much. Yeah. He's too much. He'll have my mind. Yeah. Have you ever been walking along and everything was fine one day and all of a sudden you was all confused? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, look at here. That he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Peter know what he's talking about. He couldn't talk like this over in Matthew. He says, be sober. Become emotionally stable. Don't fly off the handle. Just like this right here. You say, you know say folks say like, you have to watch what you say around them. One word and their whole mood and change. Well, all right, that's okay. All right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. right. He mad at everybody. Everybody. Ain't nobody right. He said, be sober. Sober up. Sober ain't just about drinking. Sober is about clear thinking. It is what it is. I don't have to walk around. I've been through hell and high water. I done made so many mistakes that I thought I'd never get up no more. But if it had not been for God, God made a way. God, God looked past all of my faults and saw my knees. So Peter tells him, he said, he said cast your cares. On oh, him, God can handle this right here. Whatever it is that you go, God can handle it. So cast your care upon him, for he care for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Be vigilant. Be disciplined. I'm almost through, but I, what, one of the big keys to life is consistency. One of the keys to life is consistency. Let me tell y'all something. When y'all come to church, I can just about tell you when you're going to get here. I know who's going to be here early. And usually the ones who are here early is the one that's least physically capable to get here. Be vigilant. And the thing about God is, is that you don't have to stay where you are. You do not have to stay where you are. Amen. But to become vigilant, you have to be disciplined. Yes, yes. Since July, 20, it was years that I had these, this, this exercise stuff out there in, in my house. I didn't touch it. You know how come I didn't touch it? Because I didn't feel like it. I'm not going out there and walk. I ain't going to do no exercise. I don't feel like it. That bed seemed a whole lot better. 
Huh? I heard one woman say, when she get up to use the bathroom at night, she don't say she going to the John. She says she going to the gym because it make it sound better. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? Since July the 27th, 2015, I haven't found an excuse not to work out every day. You have to become consistent. When you become consistent, then you become stable. When you remove all excuses, then you become a force to be reckoned with. Because what you're doing, Shonda, is, is that you're telling the devil, I'm coming at mine. Work while they sleep. As a black man, when I go into the courtroom, they just expect me to be inferior. They just expect me not to know what they know. But what they don't know is, is that while they at the country club, I'm studying the books. <laughs> while they sleeping, I'm in the books because the same book, the same books you read, I can read them too. I can read them too. And so then, to become consistent, emotionally stable, one, he says, be sober, be vigilant. This is it right here, y'all. He says, because your adversary, the devil. Peter had to learn that, didn't he? He thought he was just going to wheel him away because of who he was and how he felt. You can't go according to how you feel. See, children live according to how they feel. Grown folks do what they have to do. And the day that I realized it ain't how you feel, it ain't what you say, but it's what you do. They don't want you to have it because you're black. They don't want you to have it because you're a female. They don't want you to have it because you're from Phillips County. They don't want you to have it because your daddy wasn't one. But you know what? All you got to do is get up off of your rusted dust and do what it takes. If you work for it, you can have the same thing. Anybody else? Yeah. Clap your hands for the Lord. 